Hi, I'm John, your fix-it addict. I wanted to make this YouTube video because I've come up with a way to repair these wonderful holiday blow molds. This particular one's from the 80s. These are made out of HDPE, which is kind of a milk jug material. And what happens over the years, the sun cooks these things and they get brittle like a potato chip. So when they're set down hard or they're picked up and grasped, here you can see there's a hole from a, obviously from a thumb. This whole area was cracked, been repaired. This was all gone because when it falls, it hits the high spot, broke. This was all gone. Again, another high spot. Okay, here's everything we're gonna need for the blow mold project. Find some recycled milk jugs. This one's a distilled water jug. Make sure it's opaque, HDPE. Try to find one that's dimpled, has a distressed surface. We're gonna be cutting it into strips, along with hot milk glue, using it to stitch large cracks. The only thing that will make it whole. Some safety gloves, make sure they're coated. You don't want to use cotton. We're going to be working with really hot milk glue, and but that stuff gets on your skin. So test it first. Two temp heat gun, low and high. A Dremel, multi-speed, with a rotozit bit, a cutting rotozit bit. We're going to be using this at low speed to cut holes in the brittle blow mold. If we were to use a real, a, True rotozip tool, it's so powerful, it would blast the blow mold apart. Denatured alcohol. I can't keep enough of this stuff in my shop. Use it to clean hands, clean projects, prepping the work surface. High temperature, 100 watt hot milk glue gun. Not your average craft gun, it's gotta be 100 watt. It's gotta get hot to cut into the surface of the HDPE. It's got a sheen on it. This will cut into it, help it bond. High temperature glue sticks, hot now. Got to be high temp. Some safety razors. Clean casserole dish, ceramic with water, clean water. Some terry cloth rags, nothing too uh, that's going to have um, threads or loose particles on it. Nice clean, because we're going to be working with water throughout the project. We're constantly going to be keeping our hands clean and getting some of the uh, excess water off. And the key ingredient, thermoplastic pellets. This stuff's amazing. They're like little pearls. You heat the water to 150, 140. You drop enough of these thermal pellets into the hot water, they turn clear and get sticky like consistency of silly putty. Once they turn clear, you take and mold them into a kind of a patty enough to work to fill the hole that you're trying to fix in the blow mold. This stuff is great. It's my new favorite uh, item in the workshop. So let's fix some blow molds. Since the craft we're working on is way up here, it's impossible to get at, get at it up there from the base. So what I did was remove the lights from the back, the panel, and I took a Dremel with the rotor zip bit and I made this hole bigger so I could get my hand in there. Gently, gently. Preheat it first before you do it because these edges are so brittle. You get the plastic a little preheated, you get in there and make a nice, gentle expansion of that hole. That allowed me then full access to get up so I could do the molding. And of course the panel still covers it. So I preheated the water in the casserole dish to right around 150 what's called for by the thermoplastic manufacturer. 
We're going to add these beads into the hot water. I always do a little more. Kind of hard part is getting an idea how many you're going to need. It's kind of hard to tell from the video, but they start turning clear. You can see the outer edge is starting to turn clear. It takes a little while. Okay, we're going to start by fixing this top hole in the blow mold. This one is a pretty serious crack. It was previously stress cracked all the way down and all the way up and around. And now that the thermoplastic is turned clear, we're going to start molding it. Got to work pretty quick. The hotter you get the water, the more sticky it is. Make sure you have a nice clean rag on your available to keep your hands dry. It's going to be wet. You're going to be working it in, so you want to dry your hands and keep them clean. It's really important. Okay. We're going to access it, like we said, through this hole. It's going to allow us to get up here. So it's, you can see the consistency, it's kind of like silly putty. I'm going to take half of it. Start drying your hands. You don't want to keep it soaked. Start flattening it out. It's going to have to fit into that crack. You get a pretty good idea. That looks pretty good right there. Dry your hands off. Dry the mold off. Put it in through the back. I'm going to work it up to here. And it's a matter of working it in with your fingers. And that's just where the hard part comes in. You've got to mold it so it's around the edges. So it kind of like sandwiches the old plastic. starts getting hard. Once it starts hardening up, you gotta keep moving it in, holding it around. You're gonna need some more. Take about half of that. Always keep a little spare. And then we're gonna kind of dry it off, dry our hands off, and I'll mold the patty. Remember to keep working it while it's hardening. It hardens pretty slowly. But I've took a piece of the milk jug top and using it for a press to kind of follow these contour lines. Just can't overdo it. This stuff is really brittle. Now if you notice it's the materials out and around sandwiched around the original material. We'll heat this and trim this all later. Right now we just want it to start hardening and then stiffen up this whole area. Then we could fine work it. We'll hit it with the heat gun and then we'll fine work it and get all the detail. But now I've got a line here. I'm maintaining this bulge for a hat top. And then I've got this line here. So work it with, get your edges going with the bottle cap and the uh, 
milk jug piece. Amazing what you could do with just stuff laying around. You could see where it sandwiches this material. It's sandwiching on both sides. Say this is the original material. The putty is on both sides. So once the putty or the thermoplastic hardens, it can't escape the hole. It's puttied on or it's sandwiched on both sides. It's got nowhere to go. But we'll do some hot milk glue and stuff on the outside when we're done to just give it some more strength. It's hardening up pretty good. As it dries, it turns white. It starts to match pretty good. So now that it's solidified, we got we can start pressing on it without having to worry about breaking this. We don't press on it too much. But now that it's hard, we got to soften it a little bit. So we'll get the heat gun. We'll soften a little bit and we can start working in the details. Nice thing about softening it, it'll get a flat surface. Can't beat it too much. It's going to get fingerprints. But we'll, when you heat it later, when we're finally finished, the heat will make the surface flatten and the fingerprints will disappear. It's all about working it in. And then create some kind of a pattern. Obviously we gotta, it's not gonna match the original. We could, make like a, an extra pattern and then when we paint it later it'll look like part of the detail. The nails are great for doing this kind of stuff. So when I cut and expanded this hole, I made sure just to leave just enough so the light socket doesn't fall in. And I left these tabs. This hole was originally much smaller. So I left these tabs to also help support the screws when this light goes back in. Now that we've softened it a bit with the heat gun, we're going to try to make these little divots in here. Again, it's a simple tool. Now we could start putting the detail into it. We're pretty much trying to match this once again. It looks pretty good. this flat to match her brim. Keep working it with your nail. Try to get them edges back in there. Work it out. So we'll get this flat. We'll fine tune that later. But it's starting to look pretty good. It's starting to match up. What we'll do later when we paint it is add some detail to this edge, this repair edge. Remember we got a we're adding extra material behind here as well and at the outer edge to hold itself in place. So we'll fine tune it a little bit. What what I'm gonna do though when we airbrush it or we get painted by hand, we got this red going over here. I'm going to make that red, that brim, so you don't notice the edge as much. And then this white, and this white. 
So we'll carry the same red over here. You won't notice the edge. So as you can see, it's hardened up pretty good. And from a brittle hole with jagged edges to a nice solid structure. I've also, the original repair added, ended about here and the crack was about there. I decided to extend this repair over another four inches to this point. This is where I blend the edge of the thermoplastic mold. I wanted to solidify this area. It's very rigid now, but I also wanted to get the, the edge of the repair off the center point. You look at it directly in the front, that repair edge, the higher point of the molded plastic would have been pretty obvious to the center point with the light hitting it. So bringing, just extending the repair over to the side gets the repair edge out of sight and it'll blend better when we paint it. Here's an example of another repair. This was completely gone. This was just a big hole. Again, it's a high spot. When the mold falls, it hits that high spot. It just ever weakens that area. So this was repaired similar to the way we did the HUD area with the hat. This was built up, pushed out, and allowed to dry with the mold inverted so it wouldn't sink in while drying. Notice I've also dimpled the finish just using uh, the screw we used earlier. I brought the repair to the edge of a existing line to make a repair edge that looks good and blends. Same thing here. Use my nail while it was still kind of tacky to get that edge in there. Pretty simple. Keep in mind it doesn't need to be perfect, and that being unperfect adds to the originality of the piece. Imperfections, as long as they're not obvious squares or something that jumps out at you, adds to the originality of the piece. This is solid. It's ready to paint. So, we made these repairs. There's a repair here as well, and one here. However, to reinforce the grid work of this structure, because these areas tend to crack when this, the blow mold falls forward, you can see where it's been impacting this breaks and it weakens the whole surrounding structure because it, this stuff is so brittle. So you could see I've taken hot mold glue to reinforce the superstructure or the the perimeter structure edges, I take the hot melt glue gun on high power on 100 watt with a brass, notice the brass edge on it. I get it good and hot, I pre-soften the blow mold with a heat gun a little bit, not too much, it'll melt. Then I come in with the hot melt glue gun on an angle I actually lay it into the plastic where it starts to melt the HDPE. So then I drag it along slowly creating a trough while I'm squeezing in the hot melt glue. When you're squeezing it into a hot plastic trough it, it breaks that sheen on the original mold and it sticks really good. Now we've created an outer reinforced area, so that ain't gonna break again. This area has all been replaced with thermoplastic glue, just like the hat repair. Divoted with, uh, gotten warm and divoted to blend in with the rest of the original surface features. But I, this, since this was gone and this was on, I had to create an edge. Since I couldn't create a perfect seamless edge here, I decided to make the edge of her coat. So it gives it detail. It hides my repair edge. This was a, this was a hefty repair here because this was all gone. 
and I make kind of the outer seam to the outer pleat of her coat. Looks pretty good. Now that we've got the upper section of the Santa Ana Mrs. Claus below mold done, we're going to head on down to the most difficult part, which is the base. The base has been dropped. This was all just destroyed. Pieces, flakes, pretty much. So I started by cleaning it with alcohol and then putting hot milk glue in the base inside just to give it some rigidity so I could start initializing a repair. Because as I would try to mold it, it would just keep on cracking. Now it's, it's pretty solid. We're gonna fix this crack with the thermoplastic moldable pellets. They work by sandwiching the original structure. And say if this was a continue, just one hole, we sandwich the whole structure the repair's got nowhere to go, so it stays in place. Unfortunately, with this one, it's cracked all the way across, and this is flexible. So if we were to do the repair, it could pull right out, because the HG, the um, thermoplastic material, even though it's is sticky, it's not truly adhesive to HDPE. It relies on itself and its sandwich structure to hold it in place. So we're going to melt a series of holes using a soldering gun to which we could push the thermoplastic mold through and mushroom it on the other side, kind of like a rivet. So it'll anchor itself in place. We're going to make some holes along the base here. And we're going to make one hole to stop that crack right there and some along here and that's how we're going to get our moldable product to adhere and, and add some structure to this. The key is to keep working it and do small sections. As one section starts to harden and you're starting a new section, heat the old section, get it supple again and then do another small section, blend it all together, do the, repeat the process, do another small section, other. See how you, you could still see the clear, it'll dry white, but you could see where I push through the holes that we made. And then from the other side, I pushed material into that to meet it, so to create a mushroom to reinforce this. Add some thickness in large areas, remember, Get some extra material inside. Once this hardens white, you won't see. But that'll give this some rigidity if you go inside and add some thickness in, area, in the areas. See, it's starting to turn opaque. Just keep working it. Heat it up. Work the edges to get them as flat as possible. It's drying pretty quick. It's getting there. He's got to, it'll want to sink in, of course, so you got to keep kind of be prepping it, or you could just flip the unit over and let gravity help you out. But I just keep, want, I want to keep working it. But that's how it looks before it turns white, and repair is in place. Now we just got to let it harden. While you're molding it, as it starts to get the pasty, semi soft, you're gonna start leaving fingerprints in it. And you might not notice it, but when you paint it later, you're gonna see it. Your fingerprints are gonna etch right into that soft, soft thermoplastic. So once it sets and starts to support itself, hit it with the heat gun. Just very close to the surface. Don't touch it, but as you can see, the fingerprints will melt away. And now it's just a nice, smooth surface. What I'm trying to get is kind of a snow effect to hide the patch. So I've got some snow bulges here, like the base. We're gonna continue that line here. So 
so it kind of it blends in better. You can see the holes are starting to disappear where we blended through and made our support holes. It came out good. Well, here's the three completed repairs on Mr. and Mrs. Santa. This was all gone. This has been filled in. We reinforced it through here with the thermoplastic mold, brought it along here, and blended it right here. And it's solid. Uh, you could paint this, but I wanted to show it prior to airbrushing or any painting. Here's a couple of the other repairs. The side here, this was all gone. This has been filled in, blended. This side's been painted. These are reinforcements with hot melt glue. This side's been all replaced and then retextured. And this is it prior to painting. Again, a nice solid repair. This has all been replaced through here. Blended right here. And this has been painted. This required such a thick fill that I needed to reinforce this area. So what I did is blended the plastic mold right here and made a fold over to look like her coat seam. And here's the base. This was a big repair. Remember when we started the video, we made a series of holes all along here to reinforce the moldable plastic that's all been put in place as it was drying I put the uh, the uh, heat gun on it in spots and I would hold it in spots to allow it to dip it in a little bit I wanted it to give the appearance of like a snow drift it's going to follow through to here with the original mold had like a the snowy base design so that's really consider how brittle that was. It is really uh, solidified and should give us a lot more years of, of use. Now you could take an airbrush, you could kind of do like a grayish, stonish, whitish, dirty snow or rocky snow and then fill in, just kind of paint it, make this look like a kind of a snow drift. We got our seams, but it's it's a lot better than it was. Well, Santa and Mrs. Claus are done, and they're ready to go outside to join the rest of our Christmas decorations. Well, we'll be getting back to him after the holidays, and we're going to do some airbrushing. And do some sealing and fine detailing. So come back and see that video. The next project is going to be Frosty. He's really had it rough. big holes and a major hole in the front all that's just gone so it's gonna have to be completely re rebuilt and the back side has a major structural crack so we're going to fix that stitch it reinforce it doesn't crack again and we'll get back to him Halloween ghost just need some touch-up and some sealing The Pumpkin Brothers here. We're going to do some touch up. They're difficult material. It's kind of like a foam, almost like that you would spray out of a can to seal your structural cracks in the walls. So we're going to seal it up but yet maintain that old look without a sheen. We'll get to them, hopefully before next Halloween. Christmas candles. These are hard to find. They are antiques. But when you do find them, they're all going to be cracked right along that edge because that's where they impact when they fall. And of course the sun heats them up, the UV, but we'll, we'll get that fixed up. Have that in the following video. Here's one we already did. It came out really good. And we also reinforced this inner edge on the inside. If it does fall again, it might get scratched, but we could touch that up. 
More videos to come.